All right, now we'll start playing. Just for Mikhail. All right, what I want to do is I want to go over these two problems. Um, now, when looking at these two problems, remember what we're, what we're doing is we're trying to find the relationship, right? Remember, we were talking about relations with tables. And one way we could do a relationship was uh, we looked at, uh, you know, an X and a Y. This, was, this is one way to do a relation. And so far, also a coordinate point was another relationship. You could also represent a relationship by graphing or um, not so much by graphing, but um, also by mapping, right? Relationship. Well, there's um, different, we need to, um, let me see here. We need to see what relationship we have between our x and our f of x, or the relationship between our x and our y. Now, just I put these as an f of x and a y so you guys can see that they're interchangeable. It doesn't really matter if we're using f of x or y. But we use f of x just to remember we say to talk about functions, right? Because these are functions because all of my domain or my x values are unique. I'm not using the same x value twice, right? And getting a different y value. So these are both functions. Um, so what we need to do is we need to see how does one function, how does the x values relate to your f of x or your output values? So the first thing you always want to do is look for addition and subtraction. That's probably the easiest way to find the relationship. So I look at this problem and I say, all right, let's just pick a point. So let's just pick a point four. To get from four to six, what do I have to do? Add two. Add two. Now, that works for this one. So I could say f of x, which is my output, equals x plus two, right? Because if I put in f of four, I get four plus two, which gives me six. Now, does this equation work for the rest of them? Yeah. Because what this rule, when you're spy, saying find the rule, it, the rule has to work for not just four, but it has to work for every single x value. So if I do zero plus two, does that give me six? I'm sorry. Zero plus two, does that give me two? Yes. Negative one plus two, does that give me one? Yes. yes. So therefore, that is my rule. And it works. That makes sense. Next one. Um, over here, again, I'm going to look for addition and subtraction. Now here it looks like I'm going to be um, here it looks like I'm going to be doing some different things. To get from negative two to six, I'm going to have to add eight, right? So I'd write f of x equals my number x for this one would be and then plus eight. However, if I do if I try that same rule on this number, does it work? Negative 8 plus 8, does that give me 24? No. No, it gives me 0, right? So therefore, this rule does not work. And therefore, if one adding or subtracting doesn't work, none of them work, right? Because it has to be the same for all your x values. So the next thing we're going to look to is addition and subtraction. I'm sorry, multiplication and division. So I can say, all right, let's look at multiplying. What do I have to multiply a negative 8 by to give me a 24? And yes? Negative three. negative 3, right? So I could say f of x, oh, I'm sorry, this one's a y, y equals x, or sorry, negative 3 times x. Now, does that work for the rest of my x values? If I plug in a negative 2, negative 2 times negative 3, does that give me a positive 6? Yes, it does. So therefore, and I check it for the rest of them, it works for all of them. So therefore, this rule is y equals negative three x. You guys see that? So the first thing, the easy way to do is always look for addition and subtraction. If you find it, write it as you know your output, which is in this case is f of x equals x for any number plus whatever or minus whatever you figured out. And then if you can't find addition or subtraction, look for a multiplication or division. Okay. And then after that, we'll work on combinations. So that was it for that.